I don't want nothing melancholy, just a little eggnog and holly on this holiday with you. So hurry up, don't keep me waiting. I'm in the mood for celebrating. Just want a holiday for two. As long as I'm with you, I don't care what we do. A cozy fire, a snowflakes under the moon. Grab some candy canes, we got ice fishing. As long as we're together, we can only win. When you're around, it's Christmas the whole year through. Nothing melancholy, just a little eggnog and holly on this holiday for two. To sum up your child's nightly sleep ritual, think of it like landing a plane. 20 minutes before landing, make an announcement, stow away all toys, finish drinks, do a final check to make sure the bed is in the tucked in position, then Glide in for a perfect landing. Oh. I wrote a chip. <laughs> I hope you don't mind your editor dropping by, but I come bearing gifts. Thanks, Cheryl. I was just about to call you, actually. Now, I know we're not a newspaper, but parenting magazines have deadlines, too, so I have to ask, how does the bedtime article go? Well... I just finished and sent to your inbox. Perfect. <laughs> On time as usual. I could set my watch by you. Now, I brought another Christmas present, an opportunity. I know you're a huge fan, so I thought I'd give you the first shot. How would you like to meet Dr. Thomas Baxter? The childcare expert? Yes. You know he's my idol, right? I live by his books. And he's the reason for my wall schedule. He's passing through town tomorrow on the tail end of his book tour, and he's agreed to be interviewed for an article. You're kidding. Mm -mm. What's the topic? Parenting over the holidays. How would you like to be the one to write it? Cheryl, are you serious? That would be amazing. Thing is, this could be a stretch even for you. He's available at 10.30 tomorrow morning. And in order to get it to press, I would need a final copy no later than 9 p.m. And don't forget, it's three days before Christmas. Wow, okay, tomorrow night, uh, that is soon. I know, but if it all goes well, it may just help convince the publisher to make you a regular columnist. Do you think you can do it? Uh, okay, look, if I move Elliot shopping to today and then I use last year's Christmas playlist, push the tree shopping a day, then with the sitter, that frees up tomorrow morning just fine. <laughs> Your life looks like a regular advent calendar. Hey, without this schedule, the trains wouldn't only be late, but they would be off the rails, okay? I have the perfect Christmas planned for Elliot. There's activities, meals, my books are coming in. I even have time to get Elliot his dream gift. It is the ultimate programmable remote control robot that walks, dances, and sings. Ooh. Elliot's dad got him a robot every year and he looks forward to it every Christmas. So I want to continue that tradition. They are sold out everywhere and online, but your girl found one and has the toy store here holding it for her. Wow, why am I not surprised? It's Dr. Baxter. Last chance to back out. Do you think you can do the interview? Absolutely. And if you don't mind, I have a toy robot to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> Super mom! Super mom! Well, you got them talking again, Ryan. Great job. Thanks, Candace. Wrap this up by Christmas and you may find the keys to a corner office in your stocking. I want everyone heads down on this deal until it closes. So work together to revise that term sheet to find something that they both can agree on. Will do. Absolutely. And don't forget, partner's holiday party is tomorrow, and I want to show off my two rising stars. I'll be there with my fiance, Linda. Great. Ryan? I'll be there, too. It's awkward. I 
got it at a toy store across town. You're kidding. I called like 80 stores. I called the 81st. Oh, that unicorn is Jasmine's wish come true. Emily, thank you. It's on hold, but the store sounded like a madhouse. OK, I'm going to go now. I'm picking up Jasmine and her mom's tomorrow, and I'm not letting that unicorn slip through my fingers. Text me the address. Oh, skipping out early, Ryan. Everything OK? Back in an hour, Terrence. Thanks for the concern. Sure. Hey, I was wondering, maybe we could talk later. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi, pardon me. Can you... I'm here to pick up a unicorn. Uh, nothing, Terrence. I just had the radio on. Uh, put Emily back on. Uh, yeah. Emily, can you read that last paragraph again to me, please? Hey, Christmas. Who's next? Uh, I, I am. am. Excuse me. Sorry. These poor clerks are super busy, and I believe she was helping me first. No, she definitely made eye contact with me, as she asked. Made eye contact over her shoulder? Hey, you're um, actually holding a robot for me. I called last week. I'm here to pick up a rainbow light-up unicorn with voice recording feature. It's on hold for me as well. I'm sorry, I'm in a bit of a rush. No problem. I'm sure that um, Patty can help you as soon as we're done. I'm sorry, but this is urgent. A real unicorn's easier to find. <laughs> Trust me, if you think that's rare, my son says that this robot is the sole survivor of the Battle of Zephron V. Also, you know, I mean, unicorns, they're like everywhere in this store. Uh, not rainbow paddock unicorns that light up in periwinkle and let you accord your voice in it. Trust me, I've been looking for weeks. Don't worry. Oh. You're both here to pick something up, and I can help both of you. If I could just get your names. Hewitt. Cooper. Okay, I'll check in the back. And each purchase qualifies for a free stocking stuffer. If you want to grab one off the back wall, I'll be right back. Great, thank you. Patty, you are doing a super job. Uh, Cooper first. And maybe you could show me how to record a message to my daughter. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Adorbs. <laughs> uh, hey. <laughs> excuse me, I think this is mine. Actually, I reached for it first. I really have to have this. You could pick something else. I like this one. Guess great minds think alike. <laughs> this great mind's not letting go. <laughs> Be that as it may, possession's nine tenths of the law. Can I help? Oh, the music box. Have you seen it play? You just place an Oreo in the center like a record. And then it plays a different song after each bite. You can even program the songs into it. Wow. That is incredible. It reminds me of playing music with my son. We put cookies out for Santa. He would love this. I'll take it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's for display purposes only, but you can buy one online. Well, I'm happy to pay for it now. My daughter would love this. Maybe the owner will make an exception. You heard Patty. She said it's for display purposes only. Are you sure there's no possibility I can't buy it? Terribly sorry, but there's plenty of Santa hats. Your gifts are at the register. Thanks. Merry Christmas. <laughs> We meet again. Did you just cut in line? <laughs> Technically, you're not in line if you're like five feet from the counter and on your phone. Now, hang on a sec. Look, it's Christmas, OK? Have a heart. I have like a million things to do. I get it. Same here. Looks like you've got a lot of distractions. Yeah, just tell Candace I'll be back soon. I'm almost done with the revised term sheet for the merger. The only sticking point is the factory in Eugene. Sorry, oh. monkey out of land. I'll be back in the office in 10. OK, okay thanks. Ah, thanks. Excuse me? Excuse me. Pardon me. Merry Christmas. Have a good day. Please, after you. Thank you. Unbelievable. <sighs> Unbelievable. Hey. Mom! <laughs> oh. How was rehearsal, buddy? Fine. Uh-oh. 
The last time I heard a fine like that was when I tried to make you kale roll-ups. The Christmas concert is tomorrow. I know, I am so excited because you ring bells better than any seven-year-old I know. It's easy, I just hold the bells on my handshake. Elliot, you are gonna be great. <sighs> Mom, do I have to go to the concert? Why? Are you feeling sick? <sighs> Mom, why do you always have to carry that everywhere? Because you have the Eagle Scout of Moms, kiddo. Not sick. Okay. What is it then? I kept messing up my part today. The teacher kept correcting me in front of everyone. Oh, I see. Everyone makes mistakes now and then, okay? But if I make mistakes at the concert, it'll be in front of a whole bunch of people. How about this? Imagine you're playing bells for an audience of snowmen. And if you get nervous, just think of a heat wave coming in and making them melt and get mushy and slushy. <laughs> <laughs> There's my smile. Mm -hmm. I love you, kiddo. Let's go home. What's in the bags? I am not saying anything, Elliot. Anything for me? You are gonna have to wait till Christmas morning. Mom, I really, really, really hope it's the robot, and I've already figured out what to name him. Orson. One of Dad's favorite movies was by a guy named Dorson. That's a perfect name for a robot. So does that mean I'm getting one? Ooh, you are sly. I am not saying another word. Oh, no. Your sitter just canceled. Said she twisted her ankle. Is she OK? Well, considering she just posted pictures from a holiday party, she's OK until the next time I see her. All right, well, that blue card was the cornerstone of my day tomorrow. Let's see, I can still do the interview. It's gonna be tight, that just means I have to wrap presents tonight. So dinner, then bath, then bed. Let's go. Okay. Orson, huh? Yep. I'm digging that name. And now for the grand finale. What? Jasmine, I love you bigger than the sky. Mom, I can't sleep. I keep thinking about the concert. Oh, Elliot. Why are you holding a rainbow unicorn? Uh, this unicorn? Yeah, that one. You know, that is a super question. What, shouldn't you be in bed? Mom, wait. Who's that for? Mom, what's going on? Okay, okay, okay. I, ugh. There's been a mix up. Look, I really wanted to surprise you, but I found your robot. You found it? But I think I switched gifts with someone at the store. You lost it. I'm sorry, honey. Okay, I'll get it back. All right? And I think I know who has him. You doing okay, Elliot? What if Orson's gone for good? What if he's never coming home? He's coming home, okay? That's a promise. When we find Orson, then I'll know it's actually Christmas. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll find him tomorrow. Good night, buddy. I love you. I, I knew that guy was trouble the moment I saw him. So what are you going to do? Hunt him down. You're an ace reporter, Abby, but even you need something to go on. I heard part of his phone call at the store. His name is Carter, or Capra. He's clearly a lawyer, and he has a boss named Candace, and there's something about a factory in 
Eugene. Okay, well, good luck. But Abby, remember, Professor Baxter flies out on the red eye tomorrow, though. I won't let you down. Okay. Well, Mr. Nine-tenths of the law, I'm gonna find you if it takes me all night. Don't you worry about that. You just need to get ready to be happy. How come? I found Orson. Really? Yes, I did a little detective work and I searched some names of partners of various law firms around the city and voila. What? Sorry, buddy, too much coffee. I know where to find Orson. I was just waiting for things to open, so just watch as your mom solves this right now. I'm gonna call Sloan and Hendricks Law Firm and we are gonna get this taken care of in three, two, Sloan and Hendricks, attorneys at law. How may I direct your call? Yes, hi. I'm looking for a lawyer who's working on a merger. Can you turn his name, please? I don't actually know his name, but I was... I do need a name. Carter? Nope. Capra, maybe? Nope. Okay, well, how about a description? He's tall, well-dressed, about 30. There are more than 50 lawyers on staff here. And self-assured, a little full of himself. He just described a lot of people here. Uh, excuse me, I have another call. But Merry I Christmas. Didn't... Rude. No, Orson. Not yet, honey. Just finish your pancakes, okay? Sloan and Hendricks, attorneys at law. How may I direct your call? Hi, yeah, I just called looking for a lawyer. I forgot to mention that he's working on a merger with a factory in Eugene. Did you figure out his name yet? Not yet, but I... Okay. Hello? Hello? Did they hang up again, Mommy? Yep, but we're gonna get this taken care of right now, okay? Finish your breakfast. I'm gonna get ready. Okay, so I revised the term sheet for a Christmas win-win. The Eugene factory stays open, but you hold off on the expansion to free up funds for a buyback so the stock price rises. Merry Christmas, may I help you? Uh, now, if you all can bring your attention to section four. Oh, there he is, coming out here. Uh, Mr. Cooper's in a meeting? Yes, with us. Trust me, he'll be happy we're here. Ex so it seems like we're closing in on the terms of the revised deal. And the package you have before you represents, in my mind, the best deal for you both. Oh, yeah. He's ignoring me. Point number one. Yes, if you all can see right. Hi. Hi. Oh, my. Her? Seriously? Hello. Ryan, there's you. Yeah. OK, so. Um, does that make sense to everyone? Does anybody need more coffee or treats to go over it? We will get whatever you desire. So, if anyone has any questions on the documents or uh, anything else, um, you know. Ryan, can... is everything okay? Hmm? Is everything okay? Oh. Hi, yes. <gasps> um, <laughs> nothing. It's just a toy donation I'm making for a Christmas drive. Could you all excuse me for just a moment? Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, shall we? What are you doing here? You have my robot? Have you been drinking? Look, as far as I can tell, somehow in the hubbub of the sore, we switched bags while you were on the phone. Does this refresh your memory? Jasmine, I love you bigger than the sky. Jasmine, I love you Believe bigger me now. than the sky. Jasmine, Are we talking about this I love you bigger than the sky. Look, I have a reputation to keep. Tough guy lawyer, not pushover dad. Your secret's safe with me. Now, if we can just get our robot, you can have fun with your unicorn. <laughs> unicorn? Oh, no. For me? Daddy, you found her? Why didn't you tell me you brought your daughter to work? Because I didn't think you were going to spill the beans. Yep, it's for you. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh, my. Oh, Daddy, I love it. 
Oh, thanks so much for bringing it by and ruining my Christmas surprise. I'm so sorry, okay? But on the upside, the bigger surprise would have been her opening the wrong gift on Christmas morning, right? So look, we'll just get our robot and we will be on our way. There's one small problem. I don't have it. You lost Orson? Sorry, Sport. But we can get it back. It's nearby. Nearby? What's nearby? Look, I messengered the gift bag over to my ex-wife's, okay? Hi, your daughter's right there. Yeah, but she spends Christmas morning at her mom's, and I wanted it to be a surprise. Though that ship has sailed. My son has been looking forward to this all year. Fine. Then I'll call my ex-wife, and you can go pick it up. She's just across town. No, 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 no. You help me get into this mess, you're gonna help fix it. I'm negotiating a multi-million dollar deal. I don't have time for a cross-town mission to track down some robot. But he's not some robot. His name is Orson. And he can walk, he can sing, and he can dance. And he's the biggest, baddest, coolest robot ever. And it isn't gonna be Christmas without him. I know, buddy, it's okay. One way or another, we will get Orson back. Daddy, it's Christmas. Couldn't you help? <laughs> you bet, sweetheart. I will. Ryan! I'm sorry, but I have to step out. If you could just confirm the terms I proposed in the document you have, I will have the contract written up by the end of the day. Bye now. By the end of the day. <laughs> As we were sharing. Oh, Ooh, Bubba, we gotta zip up the coat. Ooh, it's cold out here. Hi, Mom. Okay, well, trust me, a Christmas cold is not fine. Yeah, by all means, take your time. It isn't like that eight-figure merge is important. It's okay, I parked right here. Uh, wait. Where's my car? I parked right here. Right, buddy? Right here? Yeah, right here. Gee, right by the 15-minute parking only sign? Uh... Can't imagine where your car might have gone. This day just gets better and better. Well, what do you suggest? Hmm? What, did you need a car big enough to fit your ego? Very funny. I'm gonna call her... Moxie. Moxie, meet Elliot. Moxie, that's a funny name, not like Orson. I blame this mix-up on tissue paper. Why do they have to wrap things in a ton of that anyway? Because it gives it a festive touch. Now let's agree to disagree. Look, obviously we don't see eye to eye, okay? I get that. But we are two adults here with our kids' best interest at heart, so let's just try to make the most of it. I couldn't agree more. But for the record, we're in this mess because of you. At the store, you were distracted on your phone. <laughs> Better momentarily distracted than over-parenting, I'd say. Excuse me. Now we're doling out parenting advice. I'm just saying you might try easing off the reins now and then. Maybe you should have reins. OK, because of this, my day is falling like dominoes. I'm never going to make my 10.30 interview, and I'm supposed to pick my parents up at the airport by noon. Ever heard of Uber or maybe a cab? If my parents are flying hundreds of miles to visit, of course I'm going to pick them up in person. What are they doing back there? Looking at videos on Jasmine's phone. You let your seven-year-old have her own cell phone? Of course not. She's eight. Do you have any policies when it comes to screen time? Jasmine lets me watch an hour of baseball before we play poker. Are you taking notes? I just got an inspiration for a new article. Call it... A case study in distracted parenting. Sound good? I owe you, Cheryl. Thank you so much. Just see if the professor can maybe do the interview this afternoon. OK, thanks. Yeah. Oh my goodness, this is a beautiful property. It's OK, I suppose. If a house has two chimneys, how does Santa know which one to go down? He asked the housekeeper. Anyway, we're here. Wow, 
This is a gorgeous house. This is just like Santa's mansion. Yeah, this is Santa's sleigh. Mummy always likes to have the most elegant house on the block. And Kenneth said of all the decorations. Kenneth? Mummy's new husband. Kenneth can practically build anything. Yeah, but can you build a case that'll stand up in court? Because I can't. What, Daddy? Nothing, sweetheart. Hi, Mommy! Hi, Pumpkin! Come on, let me show you my rooms! Rooms? Okay. Hello, Brooke. Brian, what is this emergency you texted about? I am still centered from couples yoga, so please keep that in mind. Since when do you do yoga? Since Kenneth opened my world to it. Our instructor just left. Excuse me, hi. You must be Lexi. It is so nice to finally meet you. No, sorry, wrong gal. Oh, this is not Lexi. This is not my girlfriend. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> I'm Abby, and I'm really sorry for this inconvenience, but we have a Christmas crisis on our hands. You have my robot. I'm sorry, I don't understand. You wanna take this one, big fella? Sure. Ryan, buddy, great to see you. Hey. Hey, Kenneth, this is uh, Abby. Great to meet you, Abby. Yeah, hi, I've seen you somewhere before. Oh, oh, um, the, uh, the calendar. That you were on the hottest doctors of Seattle. Yes, and thanks to you, it was March like three months out of the year in my house last year. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Uh, it was for a good cause, uh, raising money for the new hospital. Yeah, can we please get the package I sent over? Oh, now you're in a hurry. Come on in. Still a little confused. Oh, sorry to barge in like this, but as soon as we get the toy robot, we're gone. No worries, Ryan, it's fine. But, uh, you look stressed. Ooh, I can't can really bury a stress in your trapezius. Yeah, I can't. Shouldn't you be at the hospital right now? Nope. I uh, did an early triple bypass and popped back to finish building Jasmine's Birchwood Playhouse out back. Sorry, we're in a bit of a rush. I've got an interview that I'm missing and family flying into town. So if we could just get the toy that he sent over, we'll be on our way. Our uh, housekeeper just wrapped all of Jasmine's gifts. We don't believe in doing Christmas small. Whoa, <laughs> look at all these. I know, right? Well, this is simple enough. We just unwrap the ones that are for Jasmine. Oh, they're all Jasmine's. Then we should start now. Excuse me, you are not gonna start tearing open every gift. And what do you suggest? Wait. So you're a doctor, huh? Negative. You sure? Next patient. You're going to listen for like a whirling sound. That's Orson's internal gyroscope. So what happened to Lexi, the amazing new gal pal? Nothing happened. Lexi is terrific. Great. Really? And Abby? She's just here for the robot. Mm. Shh, shh. What is it? What is it? I. I hear a motor. <gasps> oh, thank goodness. We got him. You have cool. so much fun with your daddy, okay, sweetie? And remember... I'll have her back Christmas Eve. Great. Because day after Christmas, we're heading to Aspen for a couple of days of skiing. Oh, fantastic. Oh, almost forgot. I've got an early present for someone. So you can count down the minutes till Christmas morning. You know there's more Christmas than big gifts. And you remember, have her back Christmas Eve before bedtime. She'll be here. Thank you guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Love you. Have fun. Bye. Okay, now I understand your need for a big car. And thank you, Dr. Freud. I mean, your ex-wife really hit the husband lottery. He's, uh, 
handsome, successful British cardiologist who also happens to be a construction genius. Want to know the worst part? He's actually nice. Well, you must be nicer than you look as well. Letting Brooke have Jasmine Christmas Day. Well, I haven't exactly furnished my new condo yet, so it's not Christmas worthy. How long have you lived there? Two years. Well, at least all the Christmas gifts got back to where they belong. Good job back there, actually. <laughs> oh, a crisis I can handle. It's real life that's got me stumped. I wish I could be just like you and kind of skate through life. Is that what you think? Never mind. Just, you know, I gotta find out what impound lot has my car. Then you can drop us off and we can both be on our merry way. Still busy. Perfect. I have to deliver an article for an interview I've missed and my parents have been cooling their heels at the airport for 20 minutes. Well, this is terrible timing for me too. It's my special day with my daughter and I still have a contract to finish. Look, as much as I hate to ask, I think there's a way we can help each other. How's that? You can give me a ride to the airport and pick up my parents with me and then maybe I can watch Jasmine while you write up your contract. Do I look like a shuttle service? No, but you do look desperate. Yes. I've struck some unorthodox deals before, but this feels more like a plea bargain. Okay, fine. Great. My parents are probably wondering where I am and we can grab lunch. I'm sure someone's hungry. Oh, you bet I am. I meant the kids. to my schedule this morning. Hey, kiddo, yeah. look at you. So glad you're here. Come on. Honey, could you get your driver to take our bags? Driver, please. Yes, ma'am. Happy to help. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, Elliot. Oh, good to see you. Grandpa missed you. Oh, Elliot. Hello. 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 Oh, it's so good to oh, see you. <laughs> Abby, when did you get a second kid? Very funny. That's Jasmine, and she belongs to him. Oh. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Thank you. You too. Oh, driver, could you turn up the heat, please? Mom, he's not oh, the driver. Yes, ma'am. Heat turned up. Thank you. <sighs> hey, who here likes Christmas music? Oh, driver, I silence, do. please. Hey, don't go Grinch on me. How about the 12 days of Christmas? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. sounds good. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. Hey, we're all settled in, honey. What can I do to help? Um, you can make the salad. I already washed oh, the lettuce, oh. I made the dressing, and I chopped some veggies. Oh, great. Hey, kids. Wow, you just whipped all this up? Every battle is won before it's fought. Sun Tzu. Gesundheit. Oh, sorry, we don't do screen time at lunch. It's a bad example for the kids. And what's going on here? Planning the invasion of Normandy? Oh, uh, that's our... Monthly calendar. Red is for Elliot, yellow are my appointments, and green are our activities. I'm sensing you like order. Well, modern parenting theory says that children experience comfort with routine and structure. Excuse me. Modern parenting theory? The real world has mix-ups and muddy shoes. Not mine. Uh, except our little mix-up yesterday, remember? Yeah, everyone has their own approach, I suppose. Excuse me. So what's yours? Happy chaos. It's not an approach. That's like the lack of an approach. Daddy! Daddy, look! Foxy's flying! Oh, that's great, honey. <laughs> Classic distracted parenting. It's no wonder that Jasmine's always trying to get your attention. Well, since you're such a keen student of human nature, maybe I could share some observations I've made about you. Please, enlighten me. Well, clearly you're a great mom, but you're totally over-parenting Elliot. And that might be one reason he's a little on the fearful side. All right, listen, Larry Poppins, I think I can raise my kid. Lunch is ready. You have sandwiches. All right, kids, let's go. Oh, mm -hmm. lovely. Oh. Hey, Elliot. 
Load up. You're gonna need some energy for that Christmas concert later, right, buddy? I guess so. Something wrong? He's a little nervous about the Christmas concert, okay? Look, it's at the town center. It's a lot of people. Oh, he just needs to keep his mind off, thanks. Hey, kids, who wants to put up some reindeer on the roof? <sighs> the roof, really? Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Your driver friend is so cute. He's not my friend, Mom. Trust me. Oh, right. Wise decision not to get caught up in that friend zone thing. What? I watch cable. And look how good he is with the kids. That's because he is one. You know, I just think that is so adorable. The lengths he went to get his daughter's unicorn back from you. That's just... Is that <gasps> what he told you? Because oh. huh. I brought him Moxie back on his silver platter. Whatever. I just think he's a real catch. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's only been three years, Mom. I know. I'm sorry. Look, if he's such a committed parent, why does he treat his cell phone like a firstborn child? He's pushing them too high. And now he's taking a phone call? Unbelievable. What's that? The shed? It's my trios. Let's go. Tree houses were supposed to be up in the tree. Well, Mom said that this way is safer and that mine's unique because you can see the roots really good. I think your mom did a number on you. Dad says he's sorry, but he'll be off his call soon. I can't believe your dad lets you have your own cell phone. It's mostly so I have someone to call when he forgets to pack my lunch. What do you do? My mom's never forgotten my lunch, like, ever. But one time, she did forget to include the chopsticks with my sushi. Your mom makes you sushi for lunch? Doesn't everyone's? All good. Bye. Hard right at work watching the kids, I see. Shouldn't you be focusing on your situation? Ah, oh, I can't. My editor still can't reschedule my interview. You know, since we're covering for each other, maybe I could interview you. Seriously? A case study in distracted parenting? Why not? I mean, I've got the world's authority. It would be a crime not to share that with everyone. <laughs> Look, okay. my dad's laughing. They must be really getting along. You think? They seem to argue an awful lot. So did Trek and Fiona, and look how well that turned out. So my mom and your dad. Think about it. If we get them together, it'll be like when two superheroes team up. Double the superpowers. Well, it might make the universe explode, though. True. But I say we do it. Maybe they just have to do something fun together. OK, how about this one? Single parents at the holidays. <laughs> Fine. You can interview me if you promise to look after the kids for an hour so I can catch up on some work. Is everything with you a negotiation? Is everything with you a teachable moment? No. Hi. Hello. Hey. Can we please go see Santa now? Um. You promised you'd bring me at lunch. Can we go right. too, Mom? Please. Well, I guess we can. You know what? I can interview you there. <laughs> okay. Yes. Bet you they kiss by Christmas. We'll kill each other. Sweetie, go ahead. Go on. Go do your interview. We've got this. Yeah, we're bonding. Okay. So, as a single working dad over Christmas vacation, how does the day with you and Jasmine typically start? I'm imagining pop-tarts. <laughs> Actually, every morning, we go out and try a different restaurant for breakfast. No domestic routine. It's just that consistency, they say, is good for kids' development, so. And changing things up keeps Christmas exciting. Especially now that I don't see Jasmine so much. What do you mean? 
Well, last year, we saw each other all the time while Brooke and Kenneth were busy renovating Casa Perfecto. But ever since they finished, I only have Jasmine every other weekend, so I really try to up the ante. With what? I mean, Kenneth's always showering Jasmine with gifts and trips. I just can't compete, but I have to try. I don't get it. Why even bother competing at all? Because I'm slowly being replaced by Mr. Amazing. Sorry, Dr. Amazing. And with that new watch on her wrist, she has a reminder of Kenneth 24-7. Okay, well, you're not being replaced. That little girl of yours has not put down Moxie since you gave it to her. Ah, uh, maybe you're right. But I've been chasing down that unicorn for weeks. It's the one thing I knew Jasmine really wanted. And a way for her to hear my voice, even when we can't be together. You know, that's surprisingly sweet. Surprisingly, huh? Well, yeah, coming from you. <laughs> anyway, what's your excuse? You're Mama Grizzly at the toy store. I have to be. I have a sleigh piled with Christmas traditions, and I'm the only reindeer pulling it. Elliot's dad isn't any help? Actually, Elliot's dad passed away three years ago. I'm really sorry. It's really tough at Christmas. But I've tried to keep up with all of our traditions. Robots. That was Elliot's thing with his dad. Then I'm extra glad he got Orson back. I'm sorry I ruined your Christmas surprise. But think about it this way. If you didn't see Jasmine open Moxie, then you wouldn't have been able to see that smile on her face. And for my part, if I was a tiny bit rude at the office and toy Apology store, accepted. I wasn't exactly apologizing. Admitting that you were rude is the first step. <laughs> Can we go skate? Maybe. Uh, I don't know. Please, Mom. Um, look at this face. How do I say no? OK, maybe just for a little bit. Yes, yeah. let's go for a skate on. Yeah. You want to join them? Hot chocolate, come. come on. Yummy. Thank you. Thank you. Elliot, whoa, slow down. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> whoa. So romantic. Okay, and now you're like literally skating circles around me. Uh, I have a confession to make. Usually when it comes to parenting, I feel totally out of my depth. Well, I mean, I think you're doing a pretty good job. Look <laughs> at the evidence. You've raised an awesome kid. Oh. Uh. Yeah, we've been ahead. <laughs> Smart. When I was making my schedule this morning, I didn't think couple skating would be included. <laughs> You know, sometimes mixing things up doesn't hurt. I used to skate all the time at Christmas when I was a kid. Life got busy. Believe me, I get it. Smile for a picture. Sorry. The professor can only do the interview at 3. Elliot's concert is at 3.30, and I told him I'd go early so I can give him some support. Aren't your parents going to be there? Yes, but he can use all the help he can get. Look, I don't suppose that you and Jasmine would want to tag along. I mean, Elliot's really taken a shine to you. It would give him a boost. Plus, you have something that no one else has. A car. You can give him a ride. I'd love to, but... I promise I... I'll give you time later to work on the contract. You sure you never went to law school at some point? You'd be relentless in the cross-examinations. So is that a yes? The thing is, I need your help, too. OK. What? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? My firm is having a cocktail party today at 5, and I promised I'd make an appearance. Maybe you could come along? Are you serious? 
I hate showing up stag to these things. What about your girlfriend? The truth is, Lexi and I broke up over a month ago. I'm oh, sorry. No, oh, it's, it's OK. It was too many things, my job and Jasmine and everything else. It was too many spinning plates anyway. Just out of curiosity, did your girlfriend break up with you because you called her a spinning plate? Look, do we have a deal or not? OK, yes, I'll do it. But can we just get off this ice? <laughs> I knew it. I knew I was going to fall at some point. Thank you so much for meeting with me. I hope you don't mind me recording this. No, not at all. That way I don't have to repeat myself and you don't have to take notes. It's very efficient. Well, I have to confess, I am a fan. I have your color-coded chart on my kitchen wall. Ah, uh -huh. you read my first book? Read it? I live by it. And I'm sorry about missing our first interview. I pride myself in punctuality. Just had an unforeseen situation arise. Which is why, during the holidays especially, remember, first book, page 17, parents, have to expect the unexpected, right? And have contingencies in place, and then nothing is left to chance. chance. There yes. you go. Of course. Oh, this is going to be good. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Hey, Elliot, have a bite. You got to keep your strength up. No, 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 not just before he performs. <laughs> oh, he's got a show. <laughs> hey, Elliot. Elliot. Isn't that your teacher? Shouldn't you go get ready for your show? I guess. Sure is nice of you to help out. Abby's got her hands full. Yeah, well, she does do a good job juggling everything with that calendar. Oh, you mean her schedule and such? That's a more recent occurrence. So she didn't alphabetize all her teddy bears when she was little? Actually, uh, <laughs> after she lost Elliot's dad, that schedule is how she got through the day. Oh. Anyway, she's a wonder all she keeps going, single-handedly. Yeah, you're right about that. Speaking of keeping things going, better get some work done myself. So remember, everybody, ring your bells when I cue you. Right? You guys are going to be great. Big smiles. Oh, Elliot, are you with us? Just stay here a sec. Excuse me, I'm with Elliot. Oh, sure. Hey, Elliot. OK. What's going on? Why don't you just do your work? Because some things are even more important, like talking to you. So, what's the harm with ringing a few Christmas bells? I just don't want to. Can we call my mom? We can try, but maybe you can talk to me about it. Hmm. So, a little nervous around a crowd, huh? Happens to the best of us, even me. It's true. When I was a kid, I hated going up in front of an audience. Spelling bees, plays. Even when I became a grown-up, the first time I had to address a courtroom, I froze. I looked a lot like Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> <laughs> but take your pal Orson here. Looking at him, who would know he could talk, dance, and play music? He's what we call a triple threat. He doesn't care who's watching. He just wants to have fun, and so should you. So let's be like Orson and show the world what we got, huh? That's easy for you to say. He'll be safe in the audience. Well, you got a good point there. Hmm. One sec. I think the third book will be Called Surviving Christmas. Yeah. 
So, man, I, I think stability and predictability are the cornerstones of good parenting, especially at Christmas. Hmm. I'm sorry, am I boring you? I'm sorry. Would it be okay if I made a quick phone call? Just my son's in a Christmas concert and no, I wanted... No, Miss Hewitt, you already stood me up once. We rescheduled and you were late today. So... Could we please focus? Of course. My day has just been a world-class disaster. Well, all disasters are avoidable. With proper planning, I know. But in the real world, just to play devil's advocate here, isn't that setting an impossible standard? I mean, is there ever a situation where it may be okay just to give in to happy chaos? I should think not. Children benefit from structure, consistency, accountability. And you were able to provide that to your own kids. And my hat is off to you. You made it all work? Well, I have to say with a little help from my wife and several caregivers and the staff. But I conducted the symphony myself. Oh, I see. I'm so... You never mentioned that help in all your books. Well, I'm a busy man. The thing is, sir, mm. some of us don't have a symphony. We just have to play solo. You know, we don't all have caregivers and a spouse at home or staff. We have to be the sous chef so that our kids eat their broccoli, and the teacher so that we finish their homework on time, and the chauffeur to make sure that they get to their lessons while running around trying to keep the music perfect and not missing a beat. Because maybe sometimes perfection just isn't possible. And it's not fair to expect it or strive for it. Well, I was just looking to be helpful. Christmas without a plan is a recipe for disaster. Then I guess I'm serving up a dozen fresh burn disasters this Christmas. Where are you going? We're not done. I'm sorry. My son has a concert today, and it might not be a symphony, but it is to me. Merry Christmas. So proud of you, Bubba. You are fantastic. And the triple threat, just like Gorson. Yes. <laughs> oh, look at this tree. It's gorgeous. Abby, I don't think you have your tree yet, do you? Not yet, Mom. I knew you could do it. <laughs> you did great. The human tree. <laughs> Thank you. I guess it goes to show that some dads will do anything to keep their kids happy, huh? <laughs> Last year, I lost my doll in the air in the Space Museum. So Daddy climbed up into the lunar capsule and got it for me. We got in trouble with the security guard. And we can't go there anymore, but we got my doll. Why am I not surprised? <laughs>
How'd your interview go with the uh, professor? Oh, it was a train wreck. I just can't believe I based so many parenting techniques off that guy. You know, in all of his preaching about perfect parenting, he forgot to mention that he outsources all of his help with his poor wife and his caregivers. What about the article? I can fix it. I got some of his quotes, and I have a few hours. Honey, why don't we get your treat today? Can we stop and buy one on the way home? Well, I was going to go tomorrow, per the schedule. Mm. But maybe I can bend some rules. Really? Are you serious? Is Rudolph's nose red? Yes. Then let's go get the perfect Christmas tree. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Kids, what's the rush? Hey! They're trees. They're not going to go any place. Oh, hurry up, Chester. Right. If they get to the Douglas firs, we won't find them until the spring. OK, so what I usually do is I check out every tree, and I rate them according to shape, scent, and freshness. Hey, if Jasmine's with her mom for Christmas Day, what are you going to do? Well, I usually go for a long jog. The streets are empty, crisp air, no traffic. What? It's great, really. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, can I ask you something? Sure. What happened between you and Brooke, anyway? Oh, I used to work at a small firm doing environmental law. I was pretty content there. But Brooke always thought I should be more ambitious. So I finally changed firms, put my nose to the grindstone. But by then, it was already too late for us. What about this one? Or do you need some kind of checklist to go through before you make a decision? Actually, I like it. Hey, Elliot, Jasmine, what do you think about this one? I love it. Perfect. Oh. OK, so this is the one to beat, then. Let's just make sure there's no other good ones. Uh, Abby, 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 when you, uh, when you find the right tree, you know, the one this keeper, um, you might just want to buy it so no one else snaps it up. Saddle, Mom. Okay. We'll take this one. Yeah, we'll take this one. Right here. Thanks. Good pick, buddy. Oh, man, that's a big tree. How am I going to get it in the house? Well, I can help bring it in once I drop you guys off. Remember, I do have an SUV big enough to fit my ego. Sorry about that. <laughs> but you're not going to back out of my cocktail party, are you? Oh, heck no. I could use a cocktail about now. Besides, a deal's a deal. Elliot, look. The pond. Yeah. I'm just going to try and get all that I can. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. I'll in my car. What's taking her so long? I ran home and put a new suit on in 15 minutes. Well, son, let me give you a pointer from someone married 35 years. When a woman's getting all dressed up for you, Best to pipe down and smile. Yeah, but we need to get there. Daddy, right? he's right. <laughs> OK, I'm ready. How do I look? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought lawyers were never at a loss for words. <laughs> you look amazing. Shall we go? Yeah. Have fun, kids. Thanks. Yeah, we got the other kids covered. Fancy party. My magazine's Christmas party this year was just a couple cartons of eggnog and some heaps left over from Easter. <laughs> All our biggest clients are here, so my boss wanted me to make an appearance. I just thought of something. Are people going to think that I'm Lexi? I'll just say that you're a friend. Uh, there's my boss. We'll just say a quick hello and leave. <clears throat> Ryan, back from the trenches, I see. Hello, <laughs> nice to meet you. Hi. I'm Candace. And our firm's senior partner. So this is the famous Lexi. I was starting to think your girlfriend didn't actually exist. <laughs> actually, no, this is... Uh... Lexi, how do you do? Pleasure. 
Well, Terrence here was just telling us all about his wedding plans. Right, so, you know, initially we were thinking Pebble Beach, and then we just settled on the Ritz in Maui. Go big or go home, I always say. In this case, we're gonna go big, and then we're gonna go home. <laughs> Living large, right, buddy? <laughs> I love Maui. My husband and I met there in college. A little ramen shop where we had to share the same table. Mm. How about you two? How did you meet? Uh, you know, it's a great story. <laughs> you want to tell it, honey? You tell it best. Uh, well, I guess I would just have to say it was a Christmas surprise. Last Christmas. We were both out shopping, actually. And we just sort of kind of bumped into each other. He had this steely strength and many talents. He sings, he dances. She's as unique as a unicorn. <laughs> anyway. One thing led to another. And he just stole my heart. Actually, I believe you stole mine. Oh. <laughs> How wonderful. Anyways, I should probably get back to work. I'm almost done with the revised contract that I think will be to both parties' liking. Oh, I hope so. Nice to meet you, Lexi. Okay. She's a catch. Actually, Ryan's the catch uh, honey, for your we firm. Should... Honey, we should... He works all the time, day and night. And forgive my bluntness, but if anybody deserves to step up to partner, it's him. Well, she doesn't hold back, does she? <laughs> we should probably be going. I have a contract to nice finish. Meeting. Well, keep your phone on, Ryan. I may have some big news to share with you later today. <sighs> what was that back then? Come on, I just said the truth. You do work all the time. <clears throat> Lexi, you look so familiar. Didn't I see you in the office? Good yeah. Good. Yes. Man, no wonder you're so competitive. That guy Terrence is a real jerk. I owe you a big thank you for what you did back there. You went above and beyond. Hey, don't mention it. OK, look who's a good dancer. Yeah, you sound surprised. <gasps> oh. <laughs> well, anyways, I'm really sorry that the real Lexi couldn't be here to join you. Have fun. Don't be. Want to know the real reason she dumped me? She wanted me to jet off to Milan with her. Thanksgiving, but I had Jasmine that weekend. So I said no. That was the final straw for her. In my opinion, you're better off without her. I admit, I completely misjudged you. I just thought you were this self-centered, materialistic, rude. Isn't there supposed to be a but? <laughs> but maybe I was wrong. Oh, sorry. They found my car. It's at Abe's Towing on West Maple. Oh. I, I guess then I can drop you off after we head out. Uh, do you have any plans later for you and Jasmine? Oh, I was just going to order pizza and put on a movie for a while. I finished the contracts. Well, maybe you guys can come over later. Jasmine and Elliot can hang. You could work. Win-win. I mean, if you wanted to. We could decorate the tree. <laughs> Actually, that sounds pretty great. Okay, guys, before we decorate too far, I usually start at the base of the tree and then I work my way up so all the decorations are evenly spaced. Sorry, old habits. Guess we'll just see how everything goes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Daddy, put them together like family. You got it. It's been years since we decorated a tree together. You still have a great eye. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Not bad, huh? Yeah. Actually, it looks pretty good. Even without a plan. I'm proud of you. <laughs> hey, since we're challenging ourselves, I challenge you to turn that phone off for a bit and enjoy all this. You're right. It's just that Candace kept hinting she might have big news for me today. Then you should definitely turn it off. Sometimes it's not until you stop waiting for good news that it finally arrives. Good point. I'm turning it off. All right, you guys. We're going to finish decorating, and then it's dinner. Oh, What's with the popcorn? I was going to maybe string it and put it on the tree. Why wait?
How's it going over there? Almost done. And you? Me too. And the kids sure look happy and focused. Yeah? I'd say your cell phone being off is having a positive effect. Oh, honey, I can't find the cocoa. Oh, we must be out. I can go get some. I'll come with you. It's a quick walk. Great. Hey, buddy, I'm gonna go to the store. Be good, okay? Yeah, for sure. Be back soon, Jasmine. What's going on? Happy with how your article turned out? Actually, I am. I included my opinion as well as Dr. Baxter's, and readers can decide for themselves what works best for them. When we get back, I just have to proof it, check for typos, and send it in by 9 o'clock. So this Professor Baxter, he's like your personal guru? I don't know so much anymore. You know, he just set such a high standard for parenting in all of his books, and I always felt like he was helping me strive for perfection. Well, lately, I just feel like I'm, most of the time, falling short as a mom. From what I've seen, you're doing pretty great. I'm sorry I said you were so lax with Jasmine. She's awesome. She's so self-assured. She's funny. I think you're doing a great job, too. Thanks. It's funny. Before Jasmine, I thought I had it all. Friends, travel, career. <laughs> but once my daughter came along, I feel sorry for the old me. And not knowing how awesome being a dad would be, I just wish I could do better. Trust me, I think you do just fine. I'm glad we got our toys mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> Funny how I'm appreciating the moonlight with the guy I was arguing with just yesterday. Guess I got a little caught up in the holiday pressure, huh? Same here. Why is it the most magical time of year is also the time when life gets so crazy? It's a Christmas puzzle. Sometimes puzzles can be fun. Honestly, I had more fun today than I've had in a long time. <laughs> Me too. I'd forgotten the fun of a family Christmas. It was a nice surprise. Ugh. I haven't been ready for surprises lately. In fact, I've been doing everything I can to avoid the unexpected. And now? Maybe it's time for a change. Speaking of surprises, I almost forgot. I got you an early Christmas present. What? <laughs> but how did you get the store to give this to you? Hey, I'm a lawyer. I know how to negotiate. And it was for a good cause. Putting a smile on your face. He's giving her some kind of gift. <laughs> what? Here, let me look. Where do you think it's going? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, you can't rush these things. You gotta let the moonlight do what the moonlight does. Oh. I wanna have a look. Moonlight sure is nice. Yeah, it is. That's the thing about Christmas. You gotta remember to look up and enjoy the lights. I like how you put that. No! Oh, my God. Oh, you kids! Oh, 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 oh no. <laughs> Raids. <laughs> Coming. Please, go see. Go see. It's gonna be surprise. Oh, great. Jasmine, look at this. <gasps> Did you put marshmallows in there? Lots of marshmallows. Yes. yes. Oh. Oh. You're welcome. Ryan, why don't you start us off? Oh. Come on. Oh, come on. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, fine. Yay! Yes! High five! Wait. Ha-ha! <laughs> okay, so I, I got one. First word. One word. One word. Two words together. Two, oh, two words together. Snow. Snowing, snowing. Uh, rain. Rain. Ra rain, rain. It's Christmas. I <laughs> Um, horns, Range. galloping, uh, prancing, deer, uh, wow. reindeer, reindeer. Oh. oh, there's more. <laughs> You're eating. Brutal. Brutal. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, right, Chester, your All right, turn. Chester, you're up. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> One word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you hurt your back. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's a sore back. Oh, you need a Christmas chiropractor? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you don't get this. Yeah. The Nutcracker. Yeah, the oh, Nutcracker. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank goodness. Oh, oh, good job, Jasmine. Good job. Brilliant. Yes. All right, well. In the lead. Mom, you're up. No, 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 no. I'm Please. Oh, yeah. Take one for the team. <laughs> yeah. I gotta think of it. Okay, take your time. Give it a good one. You're so good at this. I used to be. Come on. You're good at this. Okay, okay, I got one. Hey, Janice, I got your text. Something important you wanted to talk about? <sighs> yes, but not what I wanted to share. Williams has got cold feet. But I thought they were both ready to sign. They're backsliding? Afraid so. Williams sent an email all worked up with a whole new list of concerns. You'll have to look at this now. Okay, I'll take a look at the email now and form a reply. I need you to action this now. Yes, I get it. Uh, I, I can do that for you. <sighs> I got it. Okay, I'll call you back. Uh, a Christmas rock? Frozen! No, it's right in front of you. Oh, a Christmas tree! Oh. Yes! Um, I'm gonna go check the cookies, okay? You guys keep playing. I'm gonna finish my article, too. I'll be back. Okay. All right. Clarice, your turn. Okay. Where'd you sneak off to? Sorry, I got an important text. That phones were off. I know, but I thought my boss had big news. Turns out the big news is my deal's falling apart. Were you just on my computer? I apologize. I was gonna ask. I hope you don't mind. I just need to take a look at the new demands. Yeah, I just, um, I usually don't let people use it because I, I have it. it all organized. It's like a... I get it. I'm sorry. It's my mistake. I'm done. Oh, no. What is it? No, 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 no. I didn't save the last version of my article. Just tell me you didn't close the document. I don't think I did. I just checked my email. Everything's gone. Everything I wrote, I I, I can't believe it. Just... Maybe I... we can get it back. It was just the last few edits, right? You don't understand. I don't miss deadlines. I don't fail. Believe me, I get it. But sometimes things like this happen, and you just need to take it and move on. Move on? What I mean is we still got time, Abby. I can help you with this. Cookies! Okay. Oh! 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 My. Oh! Oh! Perfect. Now my career and cookies have gone up in smoke. Oh, look, I can handle this, honey. You just deal with your work. No, Mom, that's okay. I've already missed the deadline. Can you just go check on the kids, please, and open some doors? Okay, sorry. Thank you. Oh, this is so frustrating. This is exactly what happens when I take my eye off the ball. It's not so bad. Not so bad? Why are you always minimizing things? Maybe because you're always maximizing them. I'm sorry, but in my world, missing a deadline is a big deal. I'm just saying, maybe if you'd ease off a bit I'm and let us... I have time to ease off. Okay, why am I the one on the witness stand? Let's look at your role in this. Yes, I made one mistake. And I feel terrible about it, but these things happen. Not to me. If you were just a little less distracted and a little more present, you'd get it. Can I please just have a minute? I just need to focus and handle things myself. It's my turn. I see now that things go best when I do them myself, when I stick to the schedule. 
Maybe I'm not ready for all this anyways. Not ready for what? Surprises. I see. It's getting late. Jasmine, we should go. Take good care of Orson. Take good care of Moxie. I guess things didn't work out like we thought. Bye, Jasmine. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, Bubba, what are you doing? Baking cookies with Grandma. I'm getting a head start. That is the sweetest thing. You are the sweetest guy. Mwah. Thank you. All right, well, let me help you clean up this mess, OK? Are you excited for Christmas tomorrow? Yeah. Orson kind of misses Moxie. He does, huh? Who knew a robot and unicorn could be friends? <laughs> well, that just goes to show you that you never know who's going to get along. Like, take you and Jasmine. You guys are friends, right? Yeah, that's true. Jasmine told me that her dad is all alone for Christmas. It's too bad. I bet he could really use a friend, too. What are you doing in the office the day before Christmas? We're just making a last-ditch attempt to reach Williams and McCoy. They're not getting back to me. And I thought I was the only one obsessive enough to work over Christmas. I'm sorry the deal went off the rails yesterday. Williams is not the first person to get cold feet in the 11th hour over a multi-million dollar deal. Well, he's not answering his emails. I guess we'll just hope for good news in the new year. Well, about that, you should probably pack up your office. What? because you're going to be needing a bigger one soon. <laughs> Congratulations, you made partner. But... I have been through enough of these situations to know that there is always a last-minute hitch. But if a deal is meant to be, it'll go through. Sometimes things can't be rushed. So, you're a partner. Aren't you happy? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Ryan. Merry Christmas. For parents, Christmas is the season of high expectations, of towering trees and big plans. And if that pressure isn't enough, this year my Christmas collided with another holiday traveler, a fellow single parent who broke all the rules of the road and helped give Christmas chaos new meaning. So pretty here. I love looking at the windows. Oh, Daddy, come here. Wait for it. <laughs> I love it when the kittens pop out of the boxes. I'm surprised Mommy and Kenneth didn't take you down here already. Kenneth wanted to, but I said I'd rather come here with you. You did? How come? We come here over here together. Hey, want to go inside and go on a shopping spree? I'll be getting a raise, so the sky's the limit. If you want to, Daddy, but I just like looking at the windows with you. Me too. OK, let's go look at some more. I really do love you bigger than the sky.
Well, they're not perfect, but they're not that bad either. Not bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> you all packed up, ready to go to your mom's tonight? Yeah. Can I bring Moxie to Aspen? Absolutely. Unicorns love snow. And I want you to have the best Christmas ever. <laughs> Jasmine, go get your stuff together, honey. We have to leave for your mom soon, okay? Thanks to my new friend, I discovered you can't always guess a gift by its wrapping. And though our parenting styles couldn't have been more different, his dedication to his daughter's happiness, no matter the challenges, was an inspiration. And also a reminder to be open to new ideas and surprises, especially at Christmas. Because sometimes the best present is to live in the present. At Christmas, we can't control the obstacles that appear in our path but we're all trying to get to the same destination. A happy home filled with those we love. And as every parent knows, life rarely goes according to plan. So this year, I'm tearing up the plan. And as to what New Year's brings, who knows? I just know I'm ready for surprises. And I'd like to thank someone for that reminder that in all the hubbub of Christmas, don't forget to look up and enjoy the lights. Mom, what are you doing? This board has been running me ragged long enough. But what about the schedule? Well, we'll just have to make it up as we go, buddy. Without the schedule, what's the plan for Christmas Day? Well, you know, I have an idea. Hey. Merry Christmas! <gasps> Merry, oh, Christmas Merry Christmas, audience. I'm so excited for you to open this. Open it up. <gasps> it's a telescope! <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, Holly. Oh, Christmas! Merry Christmas, Daddy! What's going on? Well, Mommy said we could do Christmas a little different this year. She did? Brooke and I worked out a deal, and you've got Jasmine today until 8. Really? Yeah, and we're kidnapping you, and we're bringing you to our house. That is, if you'd like to come. Actually, I'd love that. By the way, I read your article. You did? Yeah, and I wanted to thank you. For what? For cutting me some slack. Well, I just wrote the truth. You are a great dad. Well, now I'm hoping to be an even better one. Oh, my. 
Nothing like a home-cooked meal at Christmas. And to think we have two star-crossed toys to thank for all this. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um, Abby. Don't forget to look up. <laughs>